Ah, got some nervous talk happening. The boys are not looking forward to this. 1K run is not something we're used to. So what hurt the most on you? Hamstrings, Hamstrings. calves. Had some weird pain at the front. Like, it was kind of like a shin splint, but not really. Yeah, just from the impact. It was, uh, I was all hip flexor. Yeah, hip flexor as well got me. Hip flexor was there as well. Oh. Hamstrings not at all. Yeah, hammy's got me pretty good. Well, this is your one chance to beat me by the biggest distance you can because I'm going to be closing the gap after this. That's where you are. I'm going to hire a professional 1K coach. Hey. <laughs> I'll be very disappointed if I lost this. If he beats me, they're also factoring in the natural genetics of the long stride. That's it, that long stride and six foot two plus, whatever you are, if I beat you, that would be disgraceful. But Scotty should lap me. If he didn't lap me on a 1K, it would be really, I think it would really highlight how poor Scott's fitness is. On a 400 meter track. On a 1K track, with that leg length and, yep. I think anything else would be classed as a Disappointment or a failure on your half? A loss. Typical Shemri strategy is talking it down so that my margin of victory will become my defeat. So you think anything less than you getting lapped is a victory to you? Eh? <laughs> is that how you've interpreted this? <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Essentially. Footsteps back there. Very heavy footsteps. Back there somewhere. Two and a half laps. Got him. Got him by half a lap. Come on, mate. Push for the finish line. Push for the finish line. <laughs> half of that, mate. Yeah. Half of that. Oh. That's hard. <laughs> Do you feel like your form actually changed with your run? Uh, like after, I like about halfway through, I'm like, oh, my strides aren't uh, quite so smooth anymore. That's tough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was your biggest surprise of the month? Probably tearing my groin um, and doing a warm up drill. Yeah, that was uh, surprising to me. I thought my body was capable of warming up, but apparently it's not. You okay? Nah, that's a, that's a four weeker. <laughs> How would I say my first month of training has gone? Very, very badly. Uh, right at the beginning, I tore my groin. So I would say on a scale of one to 10, probably about a one. Uh, I do appreciate the comedic value of a middle-aged man trying to empower other men to get out there and be active, uh, tearing his groin in his first week of his new activity, but it probably would have been a lot funnier if it was Luke hurting himself. I didn't enjoy it. It didn't make life fun or comfortable. It made life difficult and painful. So that's my biggest regret. How about my long-term goal, uh, which oh, I had two goals. One of them was to perform in a BJJ tournament, a white belt tournament within a year. Uh, my first month's been written off to rehab. So now I've got 11 months left. Can I do it? Yes, I probably can. It is most likely I will be strangled in the process. Uh, can I achieve a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu blue belt? I'm showing no aptitude or potential at this stage. Uh, it's looking unlikely and it's probably many years away. I was a little bit concerned that the bruising that was initially arising from what appears to be some sort of torn muscle was only going to be the sort of bruising that my wife could see. But now the bruising is really quite spectacular. If you wanna, look at that. So I haven't had it diagnosed yet. I'm gonna head down to a physio mate of mine uh, on Monday and get that looked at. 
Um, so what I want to get is just a bit of a history mm -hmm. um, in relation to what's happened with the groin. Yep. Um, obviously you're trying to prove that middle-aged men can learn new things and perhaps the title's going to change quite quickly after this <laughs> particular session. <laughs> so please give us a rundown. Um, give me the exact uh, position that you were in when the yep. injury happened. I mean, the exact position, I was sprawling, BJJ style, so I was down on my hands and knees, and I was kicking that leg out to the side, and I got it forcefully hip extended and tried to explode back up. Yep. It was that point of explosion that I felt, what I would describe as a pop. Got and, it. And I, the instant I got I said, I'll oh, pop my groin. And it was like, it felt like it was in there. Got it. Normal, normal hip flexion is fine to about there, and beyond that, there's discomfort, like at the end point of range of motion. I wouldn't consider it painful, no. Like, you could load my hip flexors and they're fine at the bottom. Yep. Aside from hip flexion and range, what else is aggravating you? Changes in direction. Yep. Uh, that leg planted and you moving away from it. Would that be correct? So, laterally? Yes, yes, yep. definitely. Uh, I put an ice pack on it for about 15 minutes and then I thought it should be right. <coughs> That's so the age-old acronym, rest, ice, compression, elevation, and refer, we did one. <laughs> but first and foremost, um, and as I said, basic soft tissue healing is six weeks. If it is a you know, grade three um, tear, um, then you're looking at well over 50% of fibers affected, and that will take extra time in terms of your recovery rate. So yeah. given the extensive bruising, I'm pretty confident in saying probably grade three. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, there's a number of things that we can do in relation to it. But awesome. The main thing is that's pretty much the time frame that we're kind of looking at. Yeah, that's um, I'd be conservative in terms of lower body movements and yeah. particularly change of direction. Yeah. Walking is therapeutic, it's great, go for it. It'll yeah. also help stimulate blood flow to the area which will help the recovery process. Yeah. And if you're feeling like pain is affecting you and it's affecting your activities of daily living, albeit not at the moment, but if it does become a factor, then by all means, uh, non-specific anti-inflammatory uh, seven days to 14 days, you're looking at being really consistent with that yeah. um, if you need it. Yeah, cool. I probably should have done that. First week, injured, pathetic, 43 year old man, should we be doing new things? Maybe we should be doing them a little bit smarter. So I'm gonna to talk to my physio mate and I'm gonna get some strategies uh, so that I don't do this to myself again. And maybe you can learn through me and ease your way into it. My first surfing lesson and it's booked. It's this week, it's tomorrow, and uh, I think I'm ready, I am ready. I don't like my chances of being able to stand up. Um, I don't like my chances of being able to stand up. Um, everything is making me sore. I'm definitely not used to doing this much aerobic work, but I'm having fun. I am feeling good. I'm feeling a little bit lighter. My fitness has gone up pretty quickly already, I've got to say. So that's it, I'm on, I'm on the way, I'm on the journey. Hopefully I can avoid any injuries. That's a real big thing that I'm concerned about, especially tomorrow, you know, I have to say, after being someone who was um, had a serious back injury, you know, medically retired, professional firefighter. I have not done anything like this since I've hurt my back. Just keeping up some sort of physical activity each day and uh, moving forward, hopefully, I'm gonna be surfing sooner rather than later, but I don't think I'm gonna be standing up on a surfboard for a couple of weeks and uh, there's only one way to find out, so here we go. Heading down to Alexander Headlands just around the corner and got a one-on-one -on -one lesson. Got a one-on-one -on -one lesson for the next uh, few weeks. Okay, welcome to Midlife Man and we're down here at Alexander Headlands at XL Surfing Academy. I've got Sam. Sam, Ooh, thank you. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. And um, so Sam, I've never attempted to stand up and surf before. I've been training with weights for 22 years. I've got a lot of non-functional muscle. Give me the lowdown, man. What are my chances? Oh, look, after a couple of sessions, we'll get there. It's um. It's not the easiest thing to do straight away, but persistence beats resistance, and yeah, I reckon, yeah, positive attitude, and you're with the right company, you know, we'll get you up and going in no time. If you were someone, let's say, in your 40s, you've had no real experience at the beach, 
maybe haven't been looking after your fitness, you know, coming down here and, and having a lesson, would that be something you could do or is that sort of... Like definitely. Yeah? I reckon we see a few people coming here with no idea and after a couple of sessions they're progressing noticeably and then they're out the back and you know after a couple of months we're walking and we see them surfing by themselves. See, we've got a 67 year old lady I think. Yeah, 68, and she, yeah, 68 or so and she's um, she's doing it by herself now and so there's no excuse when um, when you've got someone that old that hasn't had much experience getting into it and um, coming with a crew that's teaching you to surf it's going to be a lot more successful than going out there blind and having a go at that, that's one of the things we've spoken about with uh, all forms of training. If you've got no experience, maybe paying a professional like yourself is the way to go to begin a new sort of activity or exercise. We'll be able to see what you're not doing right and wrong and the, the, the progression will go up a lot faster than going out there by yourself. Here we go, first ever surfing lesson, Alexander Headlands. Can I get one of these? Excel fella? Academy. Yeah, Let's do it. Here we go. It. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Luke's going well. Uh, he is a large man that looks like he would sink rapidly. So I don't think buoyancy is one of Luke's real skills. I don't think mobility is one of Luke's greatest skills either. Um, he's not someone that looks like he's just gonna spring to his feet and ride a wave uh, to shore. So I can't imagine Luke's doing well. I don't think I'm gonna be standing up on a surfboard for a couple of weeks and uh, I don't way to find out. So here we go. Coming up next on Midlife Man. Got some big news. Looks like Scott has torn his groin. One of the muscles that helps draw his leg back to the midline of the body. He was actually doing it shooting the uh, intro sequence of this show. If I had a functional groin, I would beat Luke every single time because my training in recent years has been a little bit more endurance based. He has been very much a bodybuilder. Now, to me, a Bali surf trip sounds really, really easy. Like, I feel like I could go to a Bali surf trip now. But I also thought that I could probably warm up, and apparently I can't. Second surf lesson coming up, number two. I've got to say, I really don't want to have any, any muscle tears. Six to eight weeks on the sidelines, it's a lot, a lot of time that Scotty's got to do, and um, I certainly want to use that time to practice the skills and get the fitness of surfing and try not to get injured, so we'll see. But I'm a bit nervous, but here we go. 